Hi guys, it's Allie with Chaos Monkey and I just wanted to kind of do a quick current project, finished project kind of video before I started anything or a lot of things new for the new year. I don't even know what I want to work on this year. Um, but yeah, just kind of, I don't know. I don't know, I'm just kind of blah today I guess. Let's see. Um, the first, let's do finishes first. Cat, kitten, you have to move your booty, mister. So anyway, I was working on a cabled hat. Oh my gosh, I hope my lighting's okay. Um, f with the Pantone. And I finished that, which is in my bag here, and he's not going to move his hiney butt. But here's the, there we go, here's the hat, and um, it was the Skull Baggy hat, um, I'm not sure that's how it's actually pronounced, but that's kind of the way it's spelled, which is S-K-U-L-B-A-G-G-E hat by, um, oh she has a really cool name too, it's something Nats, as in K-N-A-T-S. But, um, hold on a second, I gotta go get the baby kitten, he's getting into something, hold on a sec. Okay, I'm back. It's by Imagine Nats, which is, um, Imagine G-N-A-T-S, and it's the Skull Baggy, I think I spelled it right, but I'll link it down below. I don't have a paper copy. Oh, sorry about the squeaking. I only have a, um, digital copy on my computer, so I can't really just show it to you guys, but I'll put a link. And it's a really cool cable pattern, which I hope you can see, which I thought would work well with the yarn because I didn't like any of the patterns that Patone, Pantone had come out with for the yarn. It was mostly color work stuff and um, I kind of didn't like any of it, so I figured these cables would still show up really nicely in the yarn. Just do a striping effect. And um, this isn't really attached really strong. I did... Um, you can see all my ends aren't woven in, and I didn't uh, actually attach the pom-pom securely yet. But I wanted it to be, I didn't want to do a baggie. And so I did it as a, an adult, she has a whole bunch of different sizes in there. She's got children's and bulky and slouchy, and it's a really nice pattern. I think it was free. I think that's, well, I mean, I really liked it, and it was free. Uh, I got fuzz on there. But... Uh, what was my point? My point was I just did the a normal adult, not baggy hat with bulky. Because technically they consider this a bulky yarn, so I just followed the bulky pattern. But I did do it on a size 8, because they consider this a 5 bulky, which it's not. Like I said, all the yarn companies are just picking a number. But, um, it's definitely a thicker yarn. It's a really round yarn. It has a lot of plies, so... I kind of just used that bulky pattern for it, and it fits really nicely. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's snug, um, it's stretchy because of the cables, and then because I did that size, freaking kitten hair, um, I only got this far, as you can see my pom-pom's not attached, with the last color, so I just kind of did a pom-pom to try to, which I will tighten later, to try to kind of keep the colors going into the last one. And I just did a small pom-pom. As you can see, I only got a few rows in of that last color. And it's... It's kind of... Oh, my camera is... My phone is being a butt. Hold on. Um, of course, I had a lot left over because this is such a small round, a couple of rounds. It was all decreases before, so... I used almost a whole... Um, come on a whole little group of it. <laughs> you know how they come apart in the little balls? Well, I used almost a whole ball for the pom-pom. And I'll attach that better. I just didn't want to attach it till I, I wove in all the ends. And, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, see this end is all loosey-goosey. But I just did... I just worked the yarn till it ran out, really, and then tried to kind of hide so there was no jogging, and then um, just worked it up. 
and then you could kind of see I had some little blips into one color to the other in the garter sections, but it wasn't too bad. I stopped it mostly uh, with this doing it clean. I think I must have skipped one, which is why I got a blip. But if you want to go in garter, if you want to switch to another color without having it um, bleed into the other color, like here I didn't do it. So you can see the blue and the green are kind of blipping into each other here. And there's gaps because of the cables, but um, I forgot to do it here. And it doesn't really show because the colors are so similar, but I didn't want to have pink blipping down here. So what you do is instead of doing garter on that first row, you knit all the way around and then go back to garter and it won't have the pink blips or the different color blips into that. It only works with garter, which is really only a problem with garter. But I forgot to do it here and then I remembered here and then I think I still forgot on some parts. Because we had one blip that came down, like here. You see these blips into the blue? That's because I apparently on this one did not knit that round where here I did knit that round so you can see there's no blips and only it works in garter you don't need to worry about it in the stockinette um, but if you don't want to get the blipping from one color to another in garter you gotta knit around first and then purl and you won't even see that you did the knit round like that um, just a tip I mean, blabber, I'm just blabbering, but if you didn't know that, that's just a tip. Like, oh, my pom-pom is all over the place. But um, for like this, when I went from this to this, I had to do a plain knit round of the green before I started doing any of the um, purling because otherwise it, the white would have blipped into the green and the green would have blipped into the white and you wouldn't have gotten this clean edge. So if you're thinking about doing something like that, just remember you got to watch um, when you do color changes in garter if you don't want it blipping into each other. I don't even know if blipping is a word. I just use that word all of a sudden, but but you know what I mean. Um, and then for the cables, I didn't have to do anything different with the cable work and the color changes. They were just normal. It was just watching out for that. When you first change your color from one to the other, that first row, um, you want to knit a plain row before you start gartering, which I did not do down here. And you can see there's blue and green. So the greens into the the blues into the green row, and the um, uh, the greens into the blue row. If you don't do it that way, so if it doesn't bother you, then don't even bother, don't even worry about it. But I thought it would show up way too much here, so I didn't want to rip back because I forgot to do it here, and I was already up to here. I was like, ah, you won't even see it, but here you'll definitely see it. So that's why I, as you can see here, where I messed it up. That's what it'll look like if you don't do the knit round first when you first change the color. So like, for instance, I would do this whole round just knit in the pink. And then when I go back around, then I would just do my normal pearls where they go to stop that from happening. But apparently, I just wanted to show you an example of what it would look like if you didn't and what you wanted to, what it would look like if you did. <laughs> That's right, I planned that. I so did not plan that. I was watching, um, uh, what was I watching? I don't even remember what I was watching. I think I was watching a movie. Um, and so, completely, just apparently didn't do it all the way around. <laughs> but yeah, I kind of, I like it, especially with the pom-pom, especially once it, it's attached properly. And uh, the yarn is really squishy and really warm. It's a very thick, it's not a five, but it's a very thick yarn. And it does have a little bit of wool in it. Yeah, it has the 20% wool, 20% nylon, and 60% acrylic. So it should make a pretty sturdy hat. So, look at me. I just keep touching it. It's so squishy. I love touching yarn. So, that was a finish. Almost a complete finish. I just need to do the ends and... Um, the pom-pom better attached and it's just going to be for me um, oh and this this bag if you guys are curious is oh my gosh I bought it so long ago let me see I think she has a tag on the inside I don't think she makes bags anymore kicks and giggles and I love these because she put a really thick this is not flimsy satin this doesn't get caught on stuff this is a sturdy satin um, 
inside the bag, which I love because it's really easy to pull your yarn in and out. It doesn't get, you know how cotton kind of grabs it? So I bought like two or three of these bags while she was still making them and she put cool beads on and she even had a little dually bob to like put your stitch markers on and I loved her bags and I don't think she's making them anymore. I haven't checked in a while but I remember she kind of closed her Etsy shop a few years ago. Catch her! But I have a few of her bags. What else did I finish? Um... I don't know. I finished so much stuff, but it was like Christmas gifts or commissions or blah, blah, blah. Let's see. I did show this one already, but what I forgot to show you guys was I was having issues um, making the edging fit. Because this cake, you can get a shawlette out of a sugar wheel, which is what this was in candied orange. And uh, the last time I showed it, I was I had run out of yarn and couldn't do the border the way I wanted to. And so this is how I just slapped the border on. Right after the... the here's a, I shortened the mesh rows. I think I went back to here and shortened the mesh rows to the two like I was going to. So they all have twos. And normally the pattern has like five or three or it kind of varies. And then I just put a plain row and then just did the chain six, chain four row, and then just did a quick border to make it fit. And this pattern is the, I know I didn't say it before, but it's the Spring Shower Shawl by Paradise something, Yarn Paradise? Maria somebody. But if you look up Spring Showers Shawl, it's hard to say, you'll find it. And I like this pattern because it's really versatile. If you if you know your crochet, you can adapt it to almost any ball of yarn because um, uh, it's so adjustable. The sections are so adjustable, and you can adjust it to make it fit for whatever amount of yarn you have. So I make it a lot. Plus, it goes by really fast. I like the variation. I like going into mindless parts, and then having a really nice kind of lace row. It's just I just I don't know. I just love the pattern. But I just want to show you guys, yes, I finished it, yes, I adapted it, and I had very little yarn left over. Um, oh, excuse my burn. I First I burned this side, and then it healed, and I have a bad scar, and then I burned this side last night. So, yay. I have, um, if you guys didn't know, I have like a medical condition, and it, it kind of affects my, I want to say my balance and my coordination sometimes. I have fibromyalgia. Long story short, it affects your entire body, and um, sometimes I get really clumsy, and then I end up burning myself on oven doors. So, anyway, what else did I finish? That is just kind of my stuff. Let me see. Um, oh, you guys are going to laugh. Okay. I started something new. Um, I, you guys probably don't know, I'm into miniatures as well. I started a dollhouse a million years ago. And I didn't get to finish it, and I've been hauling it around for 20 years, and it got crushed in the move, and it fell apart. Because like a dum-dum, I used hot glue, like the instructions said, and do not use hot glue when you're making a dollhouse. No. Okay? The whole thing falls apart. So basically everything fell apart that could fall apart, which means the whole front porch, um, any of the um, moldings, all of it fell apart that wasn't like structurally hooked together. Um, so my whole goal this year, one of my New Year's resolutions is to pull that out and to finish it, which means I need to get a big workspace and I got to keep the cats out of it and I got to find out what's missing and maybe remake some pieces. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. So I like miniatures and I have done some miniature kits, which I'll put some pictures in if you guys want to see them. But I have another kit. coming up, which I want to do, and I'll show you this while I'm blabbering. Um, this is my next kit. I've made two small kits, and this is my third one that I want to make, which is a bakery. So I'm kind of collecting little kits, and they have lights, and I love them. But then my boyfriend got me a dollhouse kit, a small dollhouse kit. 
and I can't put that on the table. I'll take a picture and put it in. So my goals are kind of to start the dollhouse he got me, finish this one, and then also re-put together my 20-year-old dollhouse, which is huge, and actually finish it. Because, again, hauling it around for 20 years as it falls apart, sorry, my tape is not holding, um, is kind of dumb. But boyfriend got me. Now, this is not the big one, of course. The big one that's half-built is totally wrapped up in uh, the living room. So I can't show that one to you yet. I don't want to show that till I get ready to actually work on it, but it's huge. This one's much smaller. This is like much smaller in size. This one has like four rooms, one staircase, and uh, what's the scale on this guy? Half. It's half scale. So my other dollhouse is um, the other way. You know, bigger house, smaller rooms. Um, but this is really cute, and he only got it for, check that out, for $13 at the Goodwill. And that was the original price. So I guess they were made exclusively for Joann's. So somebody had given it away. And they priced it because I'm not... I don't think they thought all the pieces were there. So they just priced it low. Oh, it also comes with furniture. And so I um, opened it up already. I had to tape it up because the kitten gets into everything if I don't tape it up. But it, all the pieces were there that I could see. The only things that weren't were the shingles. And they had just... They were still there, but they were in a bag. So it looks like they had... Um, you know how the shingles come in sheets and fall apart. So it looks like maybe they had tried to look at it to put it together and all the shingles fell apart, so they just put them in a baggie. But it looks like everything's there, so um, the windows, everything. Um, so I'm thinking that I will get a workspace and kind of work on this, get it together, um, and then um, after this one's finished, then go to putting the big one back together and fixing it. Because uh, again, that big one was my really my first real um, dollhouse experience, and there was mistakes made that I think would be better to do on this smaller piece uh, if I make any more mistakes than when I try to put the big one back together. So if you guys are into dollhouses, I'm super excited, and it's a bigger scale, so it should go pretty quickly once I can actually work on it. So, and for the, what is the furniture in there? It says, dining room table, two chairs, hutch, sofa, bed, dresser, and six picture frames for the furniture. So that's cool. And I'll probably do those for this because it is half scale. It's hard to find half scale furniture. So um, that'll give me good furniture modifi mod modifying <laughs> modification experience too. But, because I'm, I love miniatures, to get back to yarn, I had an ink, a hankering to make tiny clothes. So, one of the things I bought for myself was this book, which is from Nikki Epstein, and if you guys don't know her, she's like famous knitting designer person. She does everything, and she does also doll clothes, and this is for knitted ones. Um, by the way, do I need to tell you guys what's knitted and what's crocheted? I didn't think about that. I just whip out stuff and show you, and I'm like, well, maybe you guys, some of you guys might not know the difference, and I should probably explain that. So, mental note, I will do that in the future. Anyway, the spring shower shawl was crocheted. The hat with the cables was knit. Okay, just so you know. <laughs> I just think it's so obvious, but I think, well, if, if somebody doesn't do a lot of it, they may not know what's what. But this is all knitted. She also does crochet books as well. But I like the knitted look better. And, oh my gosh, you guys. I love, like, everything she did in here. And if my camera cuts off, um, there will be a little bit of editing. Because I don't know how, fa how long I can film. I tried to clean it off, but I will probably have to um, do it in sections. But... You guys, I love everything in here, especially that little cabled sweater. Um, sorry for the glare. I have to use overhead lights. It's way too dark. But just to give you, I'm not going to go through the whole book, but just to give you an idea, um, I think she has little glamour shots up here. These are all the patterns, so I don't have to show you the entire book, and you can kind of get an idea. 
I hope my camera's focusing. I have a different setup, so I can't quite see as well if it's focusing or not. Um, but anyway, I started making this one. Which is just some, it's like a skating outfit with little pants and a little color work sweater. And I started the pants, and I really started the pants first because of gauge. So I don't want to give too much of the pattern away, but as you can see, they're fairly tight fitting. And you know, each doll is different. Um, so I started with the pants to get my gauge down. And I will show you what I've done so far. Here's my first pants. They did not work. She has you do them flat. Oh, let me move this about a little bit down so I can see a little better. Um, where was I? Okay, guys, I'm back. Sorry, I had to um, uh, stop filming because we ran out of memory. <laughs> but anyways, this is oof, my first attempt at making pants. And as you can see, um, she has you knit them flat and seam them, and I don't do well with flat knitting. Uh, and my seaming is kind of crap-tastic, as you can probably see. I wasn't too happy with my seaming either. Um, they came out way too big. So, of course, I didn't do a gauge swatch. I just started making them because they're so tiny. And I just finished them before I realized it and kind of sewed them together to see how they fit her. Um, because, yes, I got myself a doll. Um, let me show you my doll while I'm at it. Here's my doll. She is... I put a messy bun on her. <laughs> she is from Hobby Lobby. And as you can see, they give you bare minimum. She has no clothes. She barely has this little dress on. Um, and I got her on... Like, I used my 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby. So I think I paid, like... $13, $14 for her. And so she's the one I'm basing my clothes on because I know that different dolls will have different um, dimensions a little bit. And she had black on her nose when I got her, but I'm going to see if I can get that off. But quick question to anybody who has dolls because I haven't had dolls since I was really young. And even then they were just Barbies. I never had bigger dolls. But her hair is really long. And of course she's a cheaper doll so they don't have her you know what I mean? There's not a lot of hair there. There's there's big gaps, so there's kind of limited on her styling, which I expected. More expensive dolls have more hair, um, better quality hair, you know. So I just kind of wanted a cheap doll just to kind of start. And my only question is, the box says you can't wash their hair, and but they say to use like spray bottle water to like style. And I haven't really tried to style her hair yet, but her hair feels kind of greasy underneath like just from when she was made and I'm like I want to wash her hair and I but I don't want to cause it to tangle really bad so if you guys know how to wash doll hair without messing it up um, just leave me a comment because I don't I'd rather her have a little bit of greasy feel in the back of her head than to have it completely messed up or tangled and I can understand they probably don't want you to submerge her head because she does have the flippy eyes and the holes, and you don't want to get water in there. So I would, if I did wash her hair, I'd be very, very careful not to get water, like, in her holes back here. But as you can see, it has a little bit of a greasy look and feel to it back here. Um, just in a couple of spots. Um, and I kind of want to not have that issue. But anyway, neither here nor there. I don't want to ruin her hair and make her a big rat's nest. But this is the doll I am sizing too. And I think it's a Springfield. Hold on. Yeah, Springfield is the ones that Hobby Lobby uses. And I think she's Olivia. So she's the redhead. But these pants were way big on her. They fit, but they were born like slacks instead of um, skating pants. So this was kind of my prototype. I'll put a little tag on here so I remember what I did with the yarn and my gauge and my needle size and all that so you can just ignore that but also I didn't like the construction so my second pair turned out much better and you can see there's a big difference in size I don't have a lot of space here but um you can see the difference just in the length and if I put them on top of each other 
you can kind of see that I hit gauge much better the second time around. Um, also what I did was I modified this and I knit this in the round. Um, oh, I hope I don't say um too much. I knit this one in the round and I, I treated it basically like, um, my brain is not working today you guys, sorry I'm kind of having a high pain day and when that happens I also get brain fog and the words go away. Like a glove, that's what I wanted. So I did the, the body in the round on magic loop and then I put half the stitches on hold onto some scrap yarn and then I did this, I have a little bit of rowing, but I did, then I just knit one leg down with the decreases in the middle like you would do for a sleeve. So all my decreases in the middle. First I added some stitches, so I put these on a needle, added the, the crotch stitches like you would do for like a finger, but I did like six stitches in the crotch and then uh, decreased all the way down to however long, and I tried it on her the whole time, and then did the cuff the way they wanted in the pattern. So I totally modified it into an in the round pattern, just because I don't do so well. I was rowing out. Uh, if I can find it, I rowed out really bad on one row. And for you guys that don't know, rowing out is where you get a big tension change from purling to knitting. You can kind of see it when I rode out a little bit there. Not really, but there was a really bad area where I was not happy. And if it's really bad, it doesn't really block out. And you can see I've got some rowing out here and here and here. Because when you knit flat, you have to knit on one side and purl on the other, and not everybody has the same tension on both sides. And I do for the most part, but if my hands get tired, my purling tension changes a lot. And you can see all these lines are probably from the rowing out on the other side. So it's another reason why I wanted to do it in the round so I wouldn't have the purling issue. Um, so it's a really easy pattern to change into the round. I kind of did it her way thinking, well, maybe she has a reason for doing it that way because they're little tiny pants. Little tiny clothes might work better that way if you seam. But I think it's just because she prefers to, or how she learned was seaming cat hair everywhere, versus um, in the round. And I prefer to do everything in the round if I can. So these turned out much better. These actually fit her. And they do have a lot of booty, so you really have to make sure you add those stitches in the crotch because they got a big old booty on them. It's all that cloth body. So um, I could have probably made the legs a little bit tighter. They're not like super fitting, but they're a lot better fitting than this was. So anyway, that's my next obsession. So I'm going to make the sweater next now that I got gauged down and do the color work in the sweater and see if I can get that to turn out. But yeah, I don't know why. I just saw the book and I like miniatures and I was like tiny doll clothes. That's what I have to make now. I'm doing all tiny doll clothes. Oh, and this bag is by Freckled Crafts. And I am not sure if she still makes bags. Does she still make bags? I haven't bought bags in so long, you guys, but I just wanted to show you. Um, but I'm going to do... I'm going to rip out the old pants. Because this is all scrap yarn, by the way, because I also wanted to use up my scraps. So brilliant. Um, I'm going to rip this out and do the jacket in this scrap and this together because they're really contrasty for the color work because the pattern was like in blue and white and I'm going to do it in gray and pink, hot pink to see if it works out. So we'll see. I'm probably going to try to make everything in that book because it's adorable. And let's see what else did I finish. Oh, I finished a lovey. I like to make these every once in a while. It's the fox lovey. I have a bear lovey. Um, that I made as well, and I uh, made a few of these, and this is my last one. And they're pretty fast to crank out. I like them because you get to do a stuffed animal, but you don't have to make the whole stuffed animal. And you get to do a little bit of a blanket. So this is just a fox lovey with the safety eyes and the safety nose. And um, as you can see, if you don't know what a lovey is, it's just for little kids to love on. It's part blanket, part stuffed animal. And this one, I got this out of a book, but it's on my e-reader, so let me. It's Snuggle and Play Crochet 
by Carolina Guzman Benitez. And I don't know if this is going to come out, but that's what it looks like. And it's a little squished on my reader, but she has so many cute patterns in here. And I've made the bear and the fox so far, and I'm probably going to make them all. She's got pigs and cows and everything. And you, she also gives you the instructions to make the whole animal, or just the levy. And so far I've been kind of sticking to the levies and kind of using up the yarn I have. So we'll see if uh, maybe I'll make a few stuffies, because I make a lot of stuffed animals too. So, but this one I am selling in my shop if anybody's interested. Um, this is, I have one left and I'm like, what am I going to do with it? You know, I don't need a lovey, so um, I will try to um, sell it for yarn money. Yay! Um, let's see, what else did I do? I think that's it for finished projects. I don't really have anything on the needles, really. Um... But I did want to show you guys another book that I got for Christmas. And this is Future Projects. So this is Top Down Shawls by Jen Lucas. And I can't show you her name. Jen Lucas. And I love all of her stuff. I've made, I think out of her first shawl book, I think I made almost every single one. Her second shawl book, I may have made one or two. Um... And then she's had some accessory books. I don't have them all, but she had... I think I just um, checked them out from the library. And this one I absolutely had to buy because it was super awesome. So if you guys haven't heard of Jen, and this is all knitting. I need to remember to say that. Um, if you like shawls and you like... She does them mostly in fingering weight, but she does have some lace or you can kind of convert them from lace to fingering. Um, I think she's got some DK patterns in here, and of course they're all, you can adjust them all. But I don't want to give too many of the patterns away, but I just kind of wanted to show some of the pictures. But I love her shawls. So that's some of my future projects, is I'm going to probably make a few of these shawls. Because I pretty much loved, trying not to show any charts, I'm trying to show just the pictures. Um... Here's a pretty one. Um, I love them all. And on top of that, she did kind of a bonus. Oh, you guys, look at this one. That one's called Barthlot. And it's in... What yarn is that? Frolicking Feet. Interesting. Anyway, I'm going to fall down this rabbit hole if I'm not careful. But she actually did a section at the back for designing your own shawl. So that's kind of like a whole bonus section. She kind of put in a mini class that she teaches in the back and so I don't want to give too much away but it's it's not an expensive book. I think I paid $17 on Amazon. I think it goes $25.99 US. There's no Canadian price but you know it'll be more. But again I got it on Amazon for $17 and change and it's totally every worth every single penny. Um, super awesome book and um, I'm in her Ravelry group too I love her okay you guys I'm going to go ahead and pause here and see what else I need to show you hold on my sweater because it's really hard to show it on the table and it doesn't really come out in photos very well but this was the Dania cardigan that I showed you guys last time and I just wanted to show you that was finished finished because before I hadn't had the button band done or the collar so I finished those, so I figured just kind of doing a, a moving video would be better to see that. Um, the pattern was okay. I had to make a lot of adjustments. I had to redo the sleeves differently than the pattern. Um, the sleeves on the pattern were way too wide. So when I first did part of the first sleeve, I ripped it back and did a different sleeve. Um, I had to pick up less stitches on the button band on, on the collar than she said for my size because it was way too many stitches. And then I finally got the buttons, which I wanted to show you guys the buttons, which are really cool looking. They're shiny. Let me see if I can get it to focus. I don't think it's going to focus really well. There we go. And they have a little design on them. So they're almost like mother of pearlish. And they're just uh, a silver. There's plastic. So they were pretty cheap. I got them off Etsy. 
Um, and I only got six. She wanted to put like seven buttonholes and buttons and I didn't want to pay for eight buttons so I just did the six and kind of spaced it out evenly. Um, it doesn't look even because it's right on her boob here but they're they're completely evenly spaced out. And uh, I was also worried that it wouldn't fit me because when this was still rolling up I thought it was going to be huge with the button band and as you can see it's fine. I was totally worried for nothing. It fits perfectly. Um, I am not as skinny as she is so it's big on her. So as you can see, if I go to the side, there's a little bit of short row work back here, so over the shoulder blade. And then, you know, I have more booty, of course, so it fits me fine. And I was worried for nothing. The only thing, too, is that she said seven eighths buttons, and then she had you skip four stitches for the buttonholes. The buttonholes are a little big for the buttons. And I'll put a picture in, in here of it buttoned up, but they kind of pop out um, up high. Um, if you have them all buttoned then they kind of support each other but I would have probably gone smaller with the buttonhole if I had known that uh, the 7 8 buttons wouldn't fit. I didn't have any to test on it um, in stash to like test it to go tighter. So if, if you hit gauge like I did and everything was fine and you're gonna make it just be careful. Don't do this as your first sweater pattern, um, because it wasn't. It wasn't. Hmm. I made the adjustments because I have sweater experience and I knew it wasn't going to work. And you may not have that experience if it's your first sweater, and you may get frustrated. So I wouldn't make this sweater unless you're. It's a simple pattern. It's just parts of it just were not kind of lining up. Mm, I don't know how to say it, but anyway, don't do it if it's your first sweater pattern, but if you do make it or you're making it, you might want to go smaller on the buttonholes if you're going to do 7 eighths buttons. Um, so I put these buttons on for now. I may switch them out to a bigger button later. I really don't want to reinforce the holes if I don't have to, but you can also do that too. You can also make these holes smaller. So yeah, I just wanted to show you, and of course I modified it and just did gray striping instead of the multicolored striping in the pattern for the Dania cardigan and I will link it below so that you guys can see the pattern. I don't have the paper pattern in front of me. I, even, I don't even know what I did with it. But it, I just wanted to show the finish finish and it's fine. It fits. I'm happy with it with all my modifications. Um, but I did have to um, watch the button band, the number she wanted, and go down. Because if I had done the number she wanted it would have flared. And as you can see, it hangs pretty pretty evenly, as is, after blocking. So um, just watch a few things on the pattern if it doesn't sit right with you, having made a few um, sweaters before. All right, you guys, I'm going to quit making you seasick because I thought I had my setting on there for, um, you know, that motion setting so it doesn't wiggle around as much, but I'm not sure. So, all right, bye.